And with that, I guess we can start the first meeting of the spring 2021 semester. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, it's kind of weird for me to say spring 2021, but that's where we are. We made it through. So I guess with the new semester comes a new semester of club. So let's just get it rolling. Uh, I figured I'd start with uh, introductions. Uh, we had elections last semester, so we have new uh, club officers. So I just figured I'd go around introducing all the club officers. Um, I'll go first. Uh, I'm Ian Stearns, and I'm a junior meteorology major here at WIU. Um, I'm the president of Severe Weather Club for this semester. Um, I've been in Severe Weather Club since my freshman year. Um, it's been a lot of fun uh, doing activities with uh, all the people, uh, doing outreach and stuff with that. So I feel it just felt like a natural transition for me to be the president. Um, the other thing to consider is that I also retained the secretary role from last semester. So you're still going to be getting emails from me. Uh, all these Sphere Weather Club emails, those are from me. Um, I think that's it for me. Uh, Nate, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, I'm Nathan Sewell, and uh, I'm the vice president and treasurer of the Sphere Weather Club. Been with the club since uh, freshman year, like uh, Ian has. And uh, I'm a meteorology major and a GIS minor. And I think that's about it. Cool. Uh, Brandon, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself too? Yeah. I'm Brandon Maxey. I'm the webmaster with a uh, major in meteorology and a minor in emergency management. And uh, this is my second. It's good to be back. Uh, something I didn't mention, I'm also minoring in math and GIS. Uh, meteorology majors often uh, spread out their, um, you know, their fields of study across multiple disciplines because uh, it's very applicable to a lot of them. Um, that's why Sphere Weather Club, we like to uh, advertise not only to meteorology majors, but anyone of all disciplines. Um, so, yeah. Uh, in addition to those, those chairs, uh, I think Nate is also currently the treasurer of the club. Um, so... Uh, that has changed. And also, we still have three of the chairs open for club. We have the activities chair, the outreach chair, and the meteorology education chair. Those are all, those are all still open. Uh, yes, Anthony. Um, if it is okay, I've kind of designated myself as meteorology ed chair. Um, but um, that doesn't have to be the case. I really don't care per se too much. but. Um, I would take on that role if given to me, per se. Yeah, no, that's that's basically what I was going to lead into, is that we don't technically have it filled right now, but if anyone wanted to do it, uh, they're more than willing to take it. So if you want that, Anthony, that's fine. I also know that uh, other uh, grad student members said that they would take over uh, those kinds of roles if need be. So don't worry about it if you don't want to do it. But if you do, just stick up. Uh, any of those chairs are open. Um. Let's see, so next I wanna talk about uh, that survey that I sent out at the beginning of the semester. Um, I sent that out just to try to, to, to try to gauge what everyone wanted out of club this semester. So um, I just wanna review that with you guys so that we can um, just kind of get on the same footing about what we can expect from this semester. Let me see if I can present my screen here. Share that one. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Perfect. All right. So if I navigate over to this uh, survey here, uh, I got eight responses for this survey. So thank you to everyone who responded. Uh, the first question I asked was, how often should we meet for club? Uh, and as you can see right here, there's a 50-50 split. Half of us said that we should meet uh, just uh, once a week, like we always do. And the other half said that we should meet uh, once every other week. Um, I thought about what to do with this because obviously there's a 50 50 split um i think the best thing to do would just be to strike a balance between these two so i think what we could do here is for um the foreseeable future we'll just go ahead and plan on having a, a meeting every week just like we usually do but if there's ever a situation where like we have like no presentation lined up and there's nothing really to talk about in the weather and you know that kind of thing then we'll just go ahead and not meet that week um, I think that's a pretty reasonable compromise between the two. Um, yeah, does that, does that sound good to everyone? Perfect. All right. Um, next, I asked the question, how long should a severe weather club meeting last? And most of us were in agreement here. 
Uh, the majority of us said that uh, 30 minutes is a good length for a severe weather club meeting. Uh, I probably agree with that. Not to say that previous meetings were, you know, too long or boring or whatever, but I think 30 minutes is a good uh, amount of time to um, have uh, like a discussion about club business and the weather and also like have a student presentation or an activity or something. So if everyone's okay with that, then I think I'll probably try to keep meetings down to 30 minutes. So 6.30 is when I'll aim to let out. Um, that is, of course, to say, or that isn't, of course, to say that just because meetings should last 30 minutes doesn't mean they absolutely have to. If you want to present something and it's best done in an over 30 minute presentation, that's totally fine. Um, just when I'm doing the meetings, when I'm leading them, I'll probably aim toward, toward a 6.30 uh, let out time. Uh, next, I talked about when we should meet, uh, Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. That's how we've always been doing it, at least as far as long as I've been around. And almost everyone said that that works for them just fine. I know one person said that they would prefer an earlier time because they work. I don't know if that person is here. Uh, if you are, speak up. The big problem with changing the meeting time for Severe Weather Club is that it's, um, the well, rather, this department hates morning classes. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, nat or, yeah, Natural Hazards lets out at 5.15. And on Tuesdays, uh, Dynamic 2 lets out at 5.20. So the absolute earliest we could meet for club on those days is 5.30. Um, if we wanted to meet earlier, we could meet on like Thursday or Friday, but I don't know if that would be a good idea. That might cause more conflicts than it solves. Uh, generally, Wednesdays at 6 work the best for most people, so I think we're probably going to keep it that way. Uh, if you have any objections, though, please like let me know. Uh, we can try and work something out if there really are conflicts. Um. Next, I uh, just kind of asked for what kind of activities you like to see, and yeah, uh, student presentations, we like to do a lot of those, so we'll, we'll be sure to get those in. Um, study and tutor sessions, we did one of those last semester, it was pretty quiet, but that's fine. We could do it if we wanted to, and then, you know, activity nights or game nights or something, we need, we need to try to do more of those, uh, just have a little bit of fun in club. Um, and then there was another question I hear I had one response for. Uh, someone said that we should try to do some hands-on data collecting for spring storms. Uh, were any of you the ones that said that? Okay, well, um, if that person ends up does coming, I'm going to ask them uh, what they meant by that, because that does sound like a cool idea, um, but I'm not exactly sure what that would entail. Um, probably, you know, rain measurements and using see we have a chat here probably dr fitch yeah that makes sense um yeah that'd be cool if especially if we could use uh the weather radar uh, obviously we need to make sure that we do things in a covid safe environment but i'm sure that would be totally fine um but yeah that's that survey um if anyone has any questions about that uh just let me know but yeah, that's pretty much what we'd expect at a club this semester um We'll probably meet most weeks, uh, 30 minutes usually. We'll have a lot of student presentations, that kind of thing. Um, speaking of student presentations, um, I have a few ideas for presentations that I want to get to this semester. Uh, presentations are usually the bread and butter of our club. We like to have students talk about things. Um, so if we uh, have any ideas for uh, presentations that you want to do or that you want to see from the club, please let us know. Um, we like to hear from a lot of students. Uh, let's see, I have a chat from Anna here. Uh, you have a toy that could be used to collect some data, but we need to add a lot to it. Uh, was that from your weather instruments class? Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, it, it was afterwards, but I bought some stuff. Uh, right now it collects temperature, dew point, barometric pressure. I think it collects, maybe it's just those three. There might be one more thing that it collects, relative humidity um it collects those things but it has to be connected to a laptop at the current state i'd have to get a wi-fi extender and some sort of power supply in order to make it an actual probe which i haven't really done much um into that but i know like um and yeah kenny that was uh that was our weather station that we had with the wind vane and the uh the rain gauge and that sensor stuff too. We did have that in the Stevenson shelter. Um, but as far as the actual probes go, um, we would, if we did some data collecting that way, uh, I know like Rich, Rich has his own probe and a bunch of other guys, uh, they have their own probes, but they've spent, I mean, to get one working that you want to use in the field, 
Um, it's typically, I think I spent 75 and mine was really cheap. Like you're going to need to throw in some money if you're going to make a, a decent uh, probe, but that isn't to say that the radar um, can't be used. And from my understanding, from what I've talked to Dr. Finch last semester, the radar is there, it is working, the server is there, the data just has to be put on the server for it to be officially live for use. Um, and that's what we're waiting on right now. She said she's waiting on time, hopefully this semester, to get the radar on that server. Cool. Uh, well, hopefully that will be done in time for uh, the spring storm season. Um, I think it'd be really cool to start be able to being able to finally use that in some sort of weather projects. Um, I also think it would be cool if we're able to use uh, hands-on weather instruments that you made in that class. Uh, they didn't offer it this semester, unfortunately. I think it'll be back next semester if you wanted to take weather instruments. Um, but yeah, yeah. as far as student presentations go, if you have any ideas for presentations, please let us know. Um, they don't have to be, you know, strictly weather related. Obviously, we wanted to be connected to weather, but like, for example, I want to do a presentation this semester about GIS and its applications, not only in the field of meteorology, but also just in a broad range of disciplines. Um, so if you have any presentation ideas related to how weather affects biology or how emergency managers respond to weather, that kind of thing, uh, go ahead and do that. I we would love to hear from more students. Um, another thing that we uh, tried to do last semester, but we didn't really have any opportunities, was outreach. Uh, outreach is something else that our club likes to do a lot. Um, outreach is it's very fun to do, and it's also very fulfilling, and it's good for the community. Um, I know in the past we like to do, for example, Farm Safety Day in Macomb. Uh, we like to go up to Monmouth to help give uh, some Boy Scouts their weather merit badges. And I think last spring we wanted to do something with Macomb High School and the Earth Day presentations. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those opportunities have been taken away due to COVID. Uh, it's a real shame, but we're on the lookout for more virtual outreach opportunities. Um, we would love to get back involved in the community. We didn't have any opportunities last semester. So if you hear something or if you have an idea of something that we can do that involves outreach, please let the club know. Uh, that would be uh, awesome to hear about. Um, I don't know what kinds of opportunities will be available, but we'll see. Um, uh, other than that, uh, a lot of times uh, in the spring semester, we like to come up with t-shirts ideas for uh, Sphere Weather Club. I know uh, some people have expressed interest in that. Um, I think, Anthony, you might have said last semester that you wanted to resurrect one of the shirt ideas. Um, yeah, so whenever I get back on campus, which will be, I'll be back on campus next week, I'll uh, take a picture of it. But if you go to Tillman Hall on the third floor, in the bookcase that is, uh, which one is it? The one with the calendar, and there's a few uh, SWC trophies. There's that yellow one in there. Um, I think that one looks really cool and would be cool to kind of bring back. Uh, but definitely don't just like base that off of my opinion. Like we can make our own design, we can do whatever. Uh, but yeah, that one I think would be really cool to uh, bring back because obviously it has some of the uh, the METAR symbols on there. Like it has the R for severe thunderstorms, and there's a few other symbols on there. I think. Um, that's actually really cool. Uh, so that was that was my thoughts. But like I said, yeah, I mean, we we can make our own, do whatever. Uh, but that one that one looks really cool. So whatever works. Yeah, I think I've seen that one in that trophy case. Uh, it is it is actually a really neat looking shirt. Um, so if we wanted to resurrect that shirt idea, or if anyone else had any ideas for shirts, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, we can leave that as an exercise to future meetings. Uh, yeah, Nate, what's going on? Uh, did we get the shirts from last semester? Because I know I paid for. One. I wasn't sure. Um, they are right now in Dr. Finch's office. Okay. So if you ordered one, uh, they are, I gave them to her before I left last semester. So she has them. So if you need it, uh, go see her and she'll be able to get it for you. Okay. All right, cool. Um, let's see what's next on my agenda. Oh yeah. Just a, just a little bit of a reminder. I know, uh, Anthony has already sent out an email for this this week, but just as a reminder, um, so weather challenge is back. We have resumed forecasting for the spring semester. Um, if I bring it up here, um, our new forecasting city for the semester is New Orleans. Um, 
that would have been the location of the AMS conference this semester or, or this this spring, but obviously uh, that's been taken away from us. But yeah, uh, be sure to get your forecasts in. Uh, as as to Anthony said, we uh, we're doing all right as a team, but we could be doing better. Uh, the biggest thing is make sure you get your forecasts in every day, um, and we'll be doing just fine as far as that goes as a team basis. And yeah, I guess we can also talk about some weather, what's going on around our neck of the woods here. Uh, let's see. So if we look at McCollum's just outlook here, just the zone forecast. Uh, obviously, on Monday and Tuesday morning, we got a lot of uh, rain, freezing rain and snow. It was kind of a cruddy day for weather. And then uh, this afternoon, we also got more uh, snow from a uh, little shortwave thing that came through. Uh, it was just, just a light dusting uh, for us in Macomb, although Tony said he got a lot more down there in where you at, Taylorville? Yeah, Taylorville, Springfield area. Yeah, I know up north got a lot more snow as well. Uh, but that's all gone now. And so what we have left is, let me see if I can pull up a, oh, yeah, I've already got it here. Here's a GFS. Let me see if I can get it into a, a loop here. Oh, University Wi-Fi. All right, there we go. So if we look here, these are our current conditions. Uh, the the snow that came through here, uh, it's now uh, friendly to our east, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. And so now what's coming up behind it is this high pressure system right here. Uh, as we know from high pressure systems, uh, they're associated with clear skies, which means that um, there's no clouds to dampen the effect of radiation cooling at night. And uh, low wind speeds, which means that there's not going to be a lot of <clears throat> excuse me, uh, warm air coming up through here, which means that tonight it's going to get cold. In fact, you can see right here, tonight's low is going to be six degrees. That's the single digits. Uh, so, and also going into tomorrow morning, if you've got a class on campus tomorrow morning, be sure to bundle up because it's going to get really, really chilly. Um, let's see. Uh, that's going to last for most of the day uh, tomorrow. Uh, as we get into uh, Friday, Friday morning, that high pressure system is going to be moving to our east. And that means that the winds, scroll back, that means that the winds are going to be coming from the south. That means that warmer air um, and more moisture as well. And so we can see that reflected in the zone forecast here. It's going to be warmer on Friday. Um, and then if we look here, oh, excuse me, look here, we can see this little low pressure forming out here in the Colorado right now. That's going to be coming our way. And this weekend, look at that. We're going to be getting a lot of rain, uh, a lot of snow. Um, it's kind of too far out to decide what we're going to get in Macomb right now, but uh, it's definitely going to be some sort of wintry mix of rain and sleet and freezing rain and snow. It's going to be an ugly driving day. So if you are planning on traveling this weekend, be sure to be careful because that's going to be it's going to be pretty brutal. Uh, following that, it's going to be kind of pretty speculative, but it's going to be a little bit clear for a while. Although the weather, uh, let's see, the discussion here says that we can probably expect some more uh, winter weather. In the future, probably next week, there'll be at least one more um, uh, winter weather event. Let's see, we can also look at temperatures. Um, let's see. Or no, I wanted to look at temperature anomaly because I wanted to show you, it's pretty unseasonably cold right now. Uh, we've had some pretty brutal Januarys in the past, but usually Januarys, the temperature hovers around mid our lower to mid 30s, uh, upper 20s. But like as you can see right here, we can we can get down to uh, lower lower 20s. And then I was also looking as we get further and further into you know the really speculative range of the GFS model. Uh, it's predicting that we might actually get a dump of really cold Arctic air. Um, I hope it doesn't do that. I don't want it to be cold. That might happen next week, but, but we'll see about that. <clears throat> but yeah, I guess in the immediate term, expect some crummy winter weather, some cold temperatures, and yeah, hopefully we'll get some interesting weather stories later on. Uh, does anyone else have anything to add regarding uh, the weather that's going on right now? Um, only thing I was gonna say is I think the Euro actually has that going more south, that low Saturday. Oh yeah? Um, and I'm thinking that they're, 
what is happening right now and what I've seen being released by the NWS. The um, basically on the I seventy four corridor is where the hot spot's going to be as of right now um, uh, for the potential of accumulating snow. But I, I mean, obviously, it's too early to tell um, on totals to begin thinking about totals. For sure, uh, for sure. But, but that's where uh, the euro and the euro actually hit. It hit on the what storm system was it within the last week or two? It actually hit it pretty much to a T as to what was happening, um, and so more people are beginning beginning to align themselves with the euro based off of the one recent storm system. But we all know how that goes. So <laughs> yeah, we'll Take see that with the grain of salt. So. I actually haven't seen the euro yet. I, I I do want to look at that real quick. Um, let's see, I rise. We go, yeah, and I, I read the uh, forecast discussion uh, yesterday, and it said that models were pretty uh, pretty consistent that there was going to be, you know, that weather system coming through, but, like, obviously, I don't know where it's going to be. Um, uh, it does have that going a little bit more south. Um, obviously, we're going to probably still expect at least a little bit of, you know, snow. I don't know if it'll accumulate, but... Yeah. Regardless, make sure you're careful when you're traveling next weekend because it's no matter what we're going to get here, it's going to be, you know, crummy driving conditions either way, low visibility. So just keep that in mind. Um, I guess the other thing I had there, the only other thing I have for this uh, meeting is tomorrow there is an activities fair. It's going to be a virtual activities fair that I'm going to be there for for Severe Weather Club. If you want to stop by, uh, you can come by. Um, I'll just be doing probably homework at that time. I don't think the office student engagement handled the, the fair very well, but uh, regardless, we'll still be there. So if you want to stop by, uh, hear a little bit about the club, that'll be that'll be fun. Um, does anyone have any questions? Because if not, then I think we can probably go ahead and call it. Uh, next week, we'll probably have a presentation ready from one of our students. And yeah. I'll see you guys next week. Wait, that's the wrong button.